All right. Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Phil. I'm the host of the No Guts, No Galaxy podcast, bringing you a sneak peek preview of tomorrow's content. We have the Thanatos, the Loyalty Max, and a new map to show off today. I'd like to say welcome to everyone out there. Hopefully you're having a great day. Hopefully you had a great weekend. I do need your help. I'm going to drop a tweet link in the chat. If you have the ability, want to help spread the word, the gospel, that is mech porn. Retweets are appreciated. This is for our Lord and Savior, Alexander Kerensky himself. Anyways, guys, hopefully you're having a great day. Uh, Going to be diving in here, checking out some things. We do have the Thanatos here. And uh, first things to note, this is our very first IS mech that has all variants have ECM. So just sort of keep that in mind. Uh, one second. I think all versions have jump jets as well. Yes. All right. One second. I'm just checking that out. All right. Um, so jump jets, ECM across the board. Um, mm. there are a few. Let's say interesting setups that i think are going to pop out one thing uh to note aesthetically um i think this is a pretty good i mean i guess all the newer designs anyways really didn't need much of an update right i mean they got the mw location sort of thing right but nothing crazy here i mean it, it's a thanatos you you look at it dude it is beautiful it is functional it is utilitarian this is, I'm actually extreme, extremely excited about this mech. You know, I love the tell Interfere mech. Tell me mechs. how excited you are. It is my weight class, 75 tons. It's got ECM, it's got jump jets. Uh, I'm actually looking very much uh, forward to trying this mech. The, you know, obviously the, the hitboxes, the, the left and right torso, don't know how that's going to play out. Um, that'll be uh, obviously part of its success, hopefully, or, or, or otherwise, but... Uh, I'm I'm excited. A 75 ton inner sphere mech with some interesting capabilities. Yes, and speaking of which, we have a few different uh, setups that might pop out. Uh, the 5T, um, with how current MRMs are being used, I can see this. But also, the first thing that popped in my head when I saw uh, the 5T was either an SRM6 boat, right? And keep in mind. This is this is a 75 tonner with jump jets and ECM. So the first thing popped in my head was uh, Ninja. Uh, yeah, like an assassin, right? <laughs> hey, real um, quick, we're gonna give away a Thanatos Ultimate pack. Oh. So that is that is a gigantic every uh, variant of the Thanatos, um, the standard, the collection, the uh, heroes, and the uh, reinforcement. So right now, hashtag Thanatos in chat. When we're done looking at the various Thanatos uh, variants, various variants, we'll give it away. So hashtag Thanatos in chat right now. One second. Darren just giving away things all the time. All the time. One thing I did want to mention about uh, the um, new geometry being added. Um, I've been seeing a bunch of uh, bug reports uh, lately about things uh, such as, uh, you know, the Griffin and the Victors and whatnot uh, that can't equip uh, things like rocket launchers. Uh, those mechs, uh, all the loyalty mechs are pretty much getting their geometry pretty much updated to include uh, things like those rocket launchers and whatnot. So you won't see those kind of problems anymore. And of course, just so you guys can see where these things are mounted, just so you guys know. Um, let me take a quick look here. There was some visual differences between like, MRMs being used. Okay, so MRM 40s, we'll just drop these on here just so people can see them. All the all the tubes, all the counts. <laughs> You're gonna burn through ammo pretty quick. 
Yeah, no, no, no. Jeez, no. look at all those tubes. Yeah, that, that wouldn't be realistic at all. But, um, all right, so... And there's a few others. Let's go ahead and take a look at this really quick. Um, the 5S pops out to me. This is actually something that I think a lot of uh, people are looking forward to, so I'm just going to go ahead and get it out of the way, which is a ECM-capable dual gas. Right? This comes with light gas already on top, but dual gas. And I'm just going to... There you guys go. Enjoy the mech porn. I'm just going to leave it up there for a second. Oh my. Oh my, indeed. Um... High mounts, glorious mounts. Um, and of course, you already have ECM on this. I know ECM, some would say, took a hit, you know, with the skill tree, which I agree. And if you if if you invest the points, you have to invest the points, 13 nodes in them. Um, but it does help quite a bit, at least in quick play, uh, either solo or group, I think, quite a bit. Um, yeah. Will that fit stealth as well? I mean, yes, it will. You can you can do things, sir. You, you can do a lot of things, and the nice thing is you do have a, a light engine here. You can strip uh, armor, right? We'd probably want to go, you know, throw on some ammo, blah blah blah, whatever. Pick up some nodes, um, but you do have the ability for stealth, um, right there. As you can see, though, it does take up all of your remaining slots so technically you could do it i don't know if you would though i could see light pharaoh being used pick up a few more tons of ammo something like that um also with this i'm going to toss this out here uh and this is going to be a fan favorite i think uh with a lot of people dual 20s is also uh capable now if you Take ECM, you have to do a standard engine, which is perfectly capable, right? You still have plenty of options here. 300, you could easily fit, what, four, four and a half, you could strip this arm, you could easily fit a few more tons. You at least want to take probably one, if not two jump jets. So you have to keep that in mind. But you can fit some ammo, you drop some armor off the arms. Right, we're at 67 out of 78, so technically you could fit light uh, Pharaoh here. That leaves you four slots, and I think that would be pretty solid, right? You'd, you'd have four, two, three, four, and then that would give you half a ton to, to bump back into things. So you have dual AC-20s, ECM, 75 tonner, going, well, granted, 64 kph. That's not too shabby. Not too shabby, sir. Um, some other options, of course, are the uh, UX. You know, some people would want to utilize all the, uh, all the hard points on here. You do have dual ballistic energy missile um, heavy goss you can do a heavy goss on this you could even do dual heavy goss but this you is sacrifice ECM. yeah place. you're gonna sacrifice something out of there which some people may not mind and of course you're gonna sacrifice speed you'd be still going technically faster than the annihilator um, but you're not bringing much more than just that but I mean this that is pretty you can do it, right? And so this is what's really cool about the Thanatos that uh, I was saying beforehand, which is it's bringing to the table things that the Orion can't do, right? Orion only has ballistics in the right torso, right? Um, the Marauder, right torso ballistics. And of course, the Black Knight doesn't have any um, except the hero with the left arm. This is the first 75 tonner that is capable of doing dual ballistics in the left and right torso. Yes, there is uh, a few others that have, for instance, the left arm on the uh, 4P, right, is ballistic. Same thing with the 5P. But as far as a torso mount, uh, that's what this is bringing to the table. So I feel like it'll have a lot of options, um, and options are good. So uh, that being said, uh, one thing we can also look at is the hero is the one with the most energy uh, options. So just tossing that out there. If uh, 
for me at least, um, let me see here, the other options, if non-hero would be any of the 4P, 4S, and the reason I say this is for this right here. This is, this is what pops into my head um, when I was first looking at this, which was dual heavy peep or dual ER peep. I think ERs still feel wonderful. I, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the the heavies still, but I know some people like them. Um, here we have two heavy peeps, two jump jets, and then of course, depending on your engine size, you could easily throw in uh, double heat sinks here. And this is where the mounts are. So. Again, bringing a summoner-like uh, presence on the battlefield with ECM, gentlemen, with ECM mm -hmm. for the uh, IS side. And for me, though, that's pretty exciting. Now, there are uh, quirks to these mechs, um, so some may be better than others for certain uh, setups. Um, for instance... Uh, PPC velocity 15% on the 5P. So let's take a look at the 5P. Obviously in the arms. So that's not as beneficial of having energy in the arms as it is the torso. So we'd probably, you know, might not uh, take that. Uh, we have energy range on the nine of uh, the 5S, the 5T, and of course the HA doesn't get any weapon. Um, it does get uh, structure bonuses across the board here. Um, Hellbringer Summoner had a thick old baby. That that is true. It is very, as uh, Darren likes to call it, utilitarian, right? It's very utility, very practical. It's thick boned. Yeah. Do you well, do you yeah. feel like a a connection? Is that? Dude, I've always loved quote unquote ugly um, mechs as well as like spaceships and stuff like that. I you know Millennium Falcon. It's not. To certain people, it's sexy. To yeah. some people, it's ugly. I like the same with the uh, Bushwhacker. You know, it's very, I don't know. Yeah, I dig it. You I just, dig you the just look. just got a thing for it. I, I don't, know. you know, sleek mechs and all aerodynamic. Screw that. These things are supposed to look like tanks, man. Is that what it is? Freaking clanners. <laughs> all right. Of course, when I'm, when I'm role-playing my clanner, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Here's the peeps and the arms. That actually looks pretty cool. I actually really dig the look of the arms. Um, that's one thing that pointed out, uh, especially the ballistics. I like how the mounts look. They look very, I don't know why, but they look very cool. I, I, the cool factor is, yeah. Darren is speaking your language. Is that right? I think it's because uh, they actually have barrels on the weapons, and it's they not do. Uh, just the yeah. dubs. Yeah, I, I, and I dig that. Um, so the cool thing with the Thani is that you have a 75 tonner, ECM capable, jump jet capable, and um, we did notice that some of these, as far as their max engines, were slightly different than others. Uh, let me see, 360 on the 5T, but 400 over here, 360, 360, 400. It could be serving beer. I get it now. I'm like, what? What does that mean? Big chest. Yes. And so the difference uh, also, too, is so again, for 75 tonners, that's what I look at is we have very good comparables to the Marauder and the Orion. Um, we don't know how this is going to play out, guys. Obviously, very large torsos. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. And then Chris will be monitoring. Right, Chris? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but how much impact will these higher mounts, ECM and jump jet capability compared to uh, the Orion and the others out there? And again, uh, we did uh, have some comparisons, as you can see, size mounts here, energy mounts, ballistic mounts comparatively, right? And when we compare the ballistics on the Orion, quite significant difference, right? Cockpit level on the 5S. Energy mounts uh, are higher. 
as well and closer to the cockpit as well so that's a better vantage point yeah so um let's go ahead and uh like i said i, I feel like some of these lots of experimentation is going to happen um i definitely see the dual goss being used um that's the first thing that popped in my head when i saw this dual goss er's um Again, if you go about the same speed of a night gear, right? Um, and we can look at the uh, acceleration comparatively to the others as well. Um, looks like it's on par with the base maneuverability, at least this one. Some may have slightly different. So the hero is slightly quicker by a few kph. Uh, the 4S is... Uh, a lot higher than the base. You can see acceleration 24 instead of 17. Um, and of course we do have the special variant ammo as well. Hawk says the 4S has C3 computer. Why no C3 computer? I believe it's because we don't have the C3 system. That would be nope. correct. That's why it's not on it. But good question. You pretty much get free C3 anyways within just the basic sensor mechanics. Yeah, that is true. Uh, um, yes, we will We will get to the cockpit items, guys. Actually, let's, be, let's uh, go patient. ahead. We can show or off we those. we can do it now. Yeah, we can show off those. Um, metal Pipe Warhorn is the official name. Work Lamp and uh, Drill Power Tool. And I'll go ahead and play this. Almost reminds me of like Iron Man Tony Stark coming in. I don't know why. Is that I am Iron right? Man? Like yeah. that's you know. Um Yeah, we'll show off the bagpipes too. What was it? Were the bagpipes uh, early adopter, or was that part of the loyalty? I forget. That was the uh, loyalty, or one of those. Let me uh, double check, so I'm not uh, speaking out of my ass here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, but we will cover all the uh, cockpit items, guys. Don't worry. Yes. Including loyalty. Yes. Uh, and uh, the items that go with that. Just showcasing what came with the uh, Thanny here. Of course, we Hashtag have Thanatos in chat right now for your chance to win a Thanatos Ultimate Pack. That's every single variant of the Thanatos. Yours for the taking right now. Hashtag Thanatos in chat. You may have to say what you just said just at the very end. Hashtag Thanatos in chat, right? That, yep. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Did I drop out? Uh, no, I just... Um, gotcha. I uh, played over you because I, I clicked a thing. And, uh, no worries. Third thing. Um, so yeah, again, looking at the uh, Thanatos, what it's bringing to the table, plenty of options for energy, uh, ballistic missile combos. The 5T shines out to me just because of how strong SRMs are right now. Also, I know a lot of people are enjoying those uh, the MRMs. Here's the thing though, with the base quirks here, um, on some of these, right? I think I saw... Uh, which one was it? 4S missile cooldown 10%. And again, the where the missiles are. I think some of these missile cooldown of 15%. Again, only having one MRM, but again, throwing on like an MRM 20, 30. I know uh, Proton's been making use of MRMs on the Atlas K, which by the way, Proton totally stole your setup. <laughs> Heavy Goss. Yeah, I like that. MRMs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we've been seeing a lot of heavy gods, uh, MMRMs uh, kind of get used and quickly more nowadays. Uh, one thing to note, 4P, uh, AC20 in the arm, doesn't have lower arm actuator. Um, let's see here, just to point that out on any of these. Lower arm actuator on the 5P, so you are not able to do an AC20. Um, of course, we already know about the 5S, and we have the no... 4P is the only one without the arm actuator. Yeah, and then we have the hero with the uh, five missile hard points in the right arm. Five, not to be confused with four, 
a five. A literal rocket fist. Yeah. I like, oh. They do look, uh, the one is mounted up above. I think that's the mm. second, or one of the 15s as well. So right there. Primary colors, by the way, while we're here, let's go ahead and uh, showcase those really quick. I'm going to do some obnoxious colors just so you guys can see the difference here. Chris, now you got me wanting an actual rocket fist. Like, wouldn't that be, like, April Pretty, Fool's? Pretty it looks, I hang over it, you. it you looks sci-fi have... compared to the, like, uh, the Zeus, where it has that big old ball of yeah. eight. It does. All right. I like the Zeus's giant ball. Looks like uh, one of those uh, kind of Apache rocket launchers. Just the cylinder of missiles. for those that are wanting to see yes actually you know what's it? <laughs> I, I don't know why i didn't think about this sooner um you do have something very interesting here a 75 tonner i i know why i didn't think about it because I, i'm probably not gonna do it but i mean guys it's we can do things here. Don't hate me. You know. I mean, I'm, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> Unsubbed. <laughs> um, you can do some fun things with this. Now, granted, you're not getting any buffs as far as the, uh, the, the, the quirks are concerned. But you are getting... Um, some some very nice uh, hard points with ECM, so you are ruining the game for everyone. How dare you? Um, I also, like I said, I, th I think for the most part, this is going to be really strong in the brawling department. MRMs and SRMs. Um, the ECM does help with uh, um, you know LRMs, right? But here's the thing: is you don't you don't have the ability for a tag laser, so there's a drawback to that. So you'd pretty much have to rely on NARC, and you're not getting any buffs for that. But you could do that. You'd have to sacrifice a muscle slot, which quite possibly is what someone wants to do. So there's that. So expect that to happen out there. Stock loadout is 6 MRM 10s. Yes. Um, I can see that being a pain in the ass. Um, but all right. I'm going to go ahead and jump around here. I um, feel like... like we should do this right here I'm gonna showcase something really quick are you, are you guys ready Rubalite? I'm making I'm preparing myself yeah I'm ready are you ready? oh you can jump into the map yeah I was gonna jump in the map BAM Rubalite Oasis here we go it's been a while since we've had a new map and uh, as some of you if you listen to our podcast our last podcast we did uh, Interview John, who created this map, was the so, driving force behind it. Pretty cool map. I need, I need to know, by show of cap is in chat, are you guys ready? Cap at me. <laughs> cap at me now. We have like 300 people. There should be cap of spam going on. Let's let's start it. You guys ready to see the new map? All right. All right. All right. Map. Kappa. Kappa map. At this point, should I be like, sorry, we can't show it. No, we're definitely showing it. <laughs> Dick move, Phil. Here we go, guys. Rubelite Oasis. This was actually a really cool uh, discussion we had. Um, aesthetically, it's got a mixture of uh, things that I dig. There's a little bit of Terra Therma, maybe a little bit of Caustic, a little bit of uh, Tourmaline, yep. uh, HPG maybe. Right, I'm going to switch Target right acquired. now. So one thing, obviously, uh, we're dropping on testing grounds. So this is where we spawn. Um, but other locations, I'm assuming, will either be out here. I actually haven't tested this. I'm assuming the drop locations will be over here. I don't know. Um, but one thing you can tell is, the, like I was saying about the fog. And this is on very high settings, by the way, guys. 
Um, so all the effects, graphics, all that particle effects is on very high. Um, the ceiling cap, you can still see pretty far. And by pretty far, I mean you can still see 800, uh, you know, 1,000 out. But one thing that was interesting is just how much verticality and movement I believe this map will have. Uh, we have the highs and lows. The, 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 the NASCAR concern. I kind of feel like this map doesn't cater to NASCAR just because of all the objects that are around. I don't know. I don't. So I don't see people going to the center and just NASCARing them. Well, the thing is, is that I think that uh, you know, people are still, still going to try it because that's uh, pretty much the go-to strategy and quick play and whatnot. But I think that there are some very big disadvantages for an entire team attempting to NASCAR on this map. Mostly that uh, you have a lot acquired. of very narrow ramps and uh, walkways to get to the high ground, and so if you're NASCARing with a full team, you're probably going to have to stick to the low ground, which means that uh, the opponent can get angles on you. And there's pretty much uh, hiding holes to pretty much, uh, you know, pick and flank you from multiple directions on this map, so... You ha I think that flankers like a spider are going to have a field day on this map, uh, getting around and just poking at them from random positions. Um, but the other concern as well is that uh, if you do try a NASCAR on this map, you're going to be forced into a lot of funnels that are going to either be susceptible to firing lines from the other team, but also you're going to be bunched up nice and tight for airstrikes and artillery strikes to really do some damage on your entire team if you do. One you thing, bring in some of those uh, landmine consumables. One thing I like about this is uh, you have plenty of movement, so if you're engaging here, right, mm -hmm. you can duck back down underneath. And that's what I was saying about the verticality of this map. I think it's going to be quite nice. Um, there is sight lines here, right? But there's also areas for you to maneuver, and I feel like that's, that's an important part. Yeah. And again, I'm just running around here, guys, just sort of showing it off well I think the most important point is that uh, if you're on the high ground and you have to maneuver you're going to be maneuvering in a different direction that uh, opponents can't get to you unless they go in a very roundabout way to get to you um, so like on maps that like um, HPG for example if you take the high ground on HPG and start to withdraw you can still kind of approach uh, the enemy from the exact same um, from the low ground uh, using the exact same paths because it's still, you know, a fairly uh, consistent arena. But with this, there's a lot of different uh, paths that you can take uh, both on the high ground and the low ground that I think is going to mix up gameplay quite a bit. So one thing to note here is I tested this is you can jump from here all the way to the top with like a spider, a huntsman, I think will clear it, viper. Uh, right, and this is something that from a gameplay perspective We don't have as many maps with that ability to where why have those you know that many jump jets now we have the potential for said mechs to be able to really maneuver No doubt hey, uh, I was just joking about the landmines guys um, <laughs> They're getting a lot of questions about the temperature of this map. Do we know the temperature? Uh, it is hot. As you can see, I'm at 8%. I do think it's around um, Tourmaline. I yeah, think it's, it's actually, if, if if I'm correct, this would be a planet. It's on Tourmaline, the planet. It's just a different part. That's what it looks like to me, think, right? Well, think about all the different climates on Earth, right? So that could easily be just a set different okay. section of the, the planet that Tourmaline's on. But... Uh, yeah. So what, one go thing ahead. I want to address, because I'm seeing it in chat, um, can you go to Echo 6, uh, Phil? So uh, there's a pillar, there, there's what appears to be a pillar on the overhead map, but I just want to point out to those in chat and also, you know, on the forums and whatnot, that that's actually not a pillar. It's mostly just, a, you know, a colored spot in Echo 6. And it's there's Echo 6 right there. there. But we'll, we'll, we'll get over there in a second. Yeah. Echo base. Yeah, but if you can make your way into like uh, the pillar that you see in Echo Six, it's not actually a pillar. But oh, because people were gonna say they were gonna NASCAR around that pillar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, and you know what's funny is the term NASCAR flanking always happens in real life too. That's okay. all it is—is is flanking, right? You're pushing. Yeah. yeah, here we are in Echo Six, so. Are they talking about that pillar? Because no, no, the the one uh, like 
You see uh, towards the Echo 5 on the minimap how there's that big red spot there? That's a, just a ground texture. Yeah. That's what that is right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a spot in the ground. It's not the actual pillar. So, if you basically are trying to NASCAR around this, you're going to be opening yourself up to a lot of uh, different flanking angles from uh, some of the more higher spots on the map. So that's what I like is, uh, what I noticed is, if you're up here, right, or if someone's shooting you, you can technically maneuver down below and maneuver around. And I just think this is going to be chaos when it comes out tomorrow. Initially. I can't wait, dude. Because, I mean, what happens when a new map usually comes out? We all sort of push towards the center. No one really knows. Um, but this is what I really like. All these little details that he uh, that he did where, you know, where this might just be a straight-up wall on some of the other maps. We have an angle underneath. And this, this is why I was asking him about, uh, you know, are we going to see some of these touches on some of the other maps? Because the ability to maneuver is, is we need it so much needed um where you can attack from a different angle and it's not just a okay hey yeah they're in um i made the reference towards that crimson uh where we only have a handful of uh, approach so yeah. it's like a dilapidated manufacturing or factory that's just it gave up on itself years ago that's what it yeah. And the other thing as well is that if you do take the high ground, there's a lot of uh, escape paths that uh, I mean, look at, look at this. low ground can't, can't uh, chase you down with. Like, we've never had a map that has this much low and high. I, like, this is why I'm digging it, and I'm just I'm excited. Uh, and guys, I just dropped the link in chat for NGNG podcast number 162 with John Titley. He's a level designer that created the map. Uh, it's one of our more popular recent podcasts. It's getting a ton of listens, and I think for good reason. Um, John was uh, very fun to interview and gave a lot of insight into the creation uh, of this map and a little hint towards the upcoming city map as well. Target totally acquired. worth uh, checking out if you haven't yet. So I'm assuming on this map, this is again, this is uh, this is sort of the, the open areas. I don't know where spawn locations are. I have not uh, seen that. Um, but you can see that there are some open maps here on the outskirts. I'm assuming this is where either spawn locations are going to be. Um, I'm assuming this map would be used for the faction play as well. I'm not 100% certain on that. But uh, uh, they said that it's going to support all modes. There you go. I forget, I forget who said it, if it was Paul or someone else, but someone did mention that uh, it was going to support all game modes, which I assume also includes faction play. But And what's cool about this I'll is you, that you see that I'm coming up to G5. All these ramps, there's so many ramps up to the structures, and then underneath there's maneuverable spots. And that's why I was so impressed with this. I was like, you know, it's, it's just going to add a nice change of pace, right? So here we are, someone was requesting an F4, F5. Um, all these big, you know, things connect. Echo 6, Echo 5, right over here, it goes down to a lower ground, right? So this would be like no man's land, but you can maneuver. And look, there's a platform right there, but it even goes further down. And I just think this is, uh, it's solid. Um, yeah, I feel like it's a positive trend. I would like Target to... Um, acquired. I, I definitely think uh, it's going to play out really fun. I'm excited to see tomorrow what happens and how people Target. use the map. New target acquired. I can't wait to play on it myself. And like I said, the ability to quickly distance yourself and maneuver. I'm wondering if uh, Light Max would be able to jump through here. I don't know. Test no, size. Depends on how many jump jets you put on. I don't know. Light mechs may be able to get through there. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm killing myself. Yeah, somebody said a true multi-level map, and that's what it feels like. I mean, yep. we've had hints towards it, you know, uh, uh, the platform on, uh, on what, Whatchamadig. 
Crimson Strait. Crimson Strait, thank you. And uh, and you know a few others that are that hint towards it, but really this is the first full-on multi-level map. And that's one of the things actually John said uh, that he enjoys. That's something that um, he favors in map creation, which again, uh, if you listen to the podcast, he hints on that same uh, thing happening in the upcoming city yeah, map as well, which we don't have a yeah, which we don't have a name for yet. So we're just going with city map. But um, I, I love the, the the vertical aspect of maps. So, this is Rubelite Oasis coming to you guys tomorrow. I'm super excited. I, when I first dropped in, I was like, oh, this is interesting. This is different. And then as I was moving around, I was like, this is going to be very interesting. Very different and in a good way. I like the verticality. I like the multi, you know, heights and directions. I like that there's multiple paths to the same area so that, again, Ninja, I like playing a lot of ECMX and this on top of that, right? Like if you're up here, there's so many paths that they could be coming out. Going low, I mean, you can't see all of the areas. So I dig that. I, dig that I think there's going to be a lot of crap your pants moments when you're down below and all of a sudden three mechs drop on, on, on you or something like that. Um, guys, hashtag Thanatos right now for your chance to win a Thanatos ultimate pack after uh, Phil is done here. We'll give it away. guys go a lot of familiar names in chat how you guys doing again this is the sneak peek preview of the thanny and of course uh loyalty mechs will be going over in just a second um and of course rubelite oasis map coming to you, you guys excuse me uh <laughs> tomorrow sorry <laughs> it just it's like came out it's of nowhere new, i apologize it's a new war oh right my there. um one thing to note too is i do have this on uh all the effects on and I'm digging the aesthetics. I'm digging where we spawned. You had this like, this, like these particles going across your screen. I like the sound effects. It's subtle. As you can see, the, the height here to the, the gas cloud, I think it actually is, is a very good use of being able to obscure stuff way out in the distance. I mean, we have these huge pillars, right? That you can sort of see on thermal. And I'm glad that they're, it's there just to sort of hide. It's a nice aesthetic. It doesn't in, it block any way gameplay. Um, and I know that was a concern when uh, we had the early preview of the map come out. Um, I know, uh, Darren, you showed off the animation for the Thanatos, but we didn't get a side view. No, and I knew that you would be doing that today, so that's why I did. It was just a quick uh, preview, but yeah, I mean, there's the animation. Can't get a better view of it than that. I just hit a wall. There is no time of day on this map, and I think that's going to be a benefit um, to where you're not limited to your visibility on the map as well. I like the dynamic, again, going underneath some of these platforms, the maneuvering that's going to go on, high-low mounts, uh, arm mounts, torso mounts, what happens if you can't aim down, and so forth. Um, I have a feeling little packs are just going to be terror on here. Yeah, there's multiple paths that light mechs, especially jumping light mechs, can take to maneuver around this map. Make it very difficult for them to get pegged down. Uh, guys, we'll take one more look at the cockpit items when uh, Phil jumps out of the mech. Oh, yeah. we can do it right here. Well, they want to hear the... Oh, yeah. So, yeah, do it. The war horn. We got the hanging cockpit item right there. There you go. A lamp, just in case it's right. dark and you can't see. Drill. Because ship breaks you, and then let me let me do a thing. Oh, 
go. All right, guys. Uh, Darren, you want to do the giveaway for this? Let's do it. Hashtag Thanatos in chat right now for your chance to win a Thanatos Ultimate Pack. That's everything that comes with the Thanatos. We'll give it away in 60 seconds, guys. Battletoads theme starts. Oh, I sort of feel like it has an Iron Man sort of theme to it. They just, uh, yeah. It, that was just Sean. He uh, sampled me playing guitar for a minute. That, you know, that figures. <laughs> Assassins are going to love this it map. It does I look pretty damn cool. All right, here we go. The winner of a Thanatos Ultimate Pack. Who's it gonna be? Is. Dr. Bushy. Dr. Bushy, are you out there? You got 60 seconds to claim your prize, sir. If he answers. And there he is. There he is. Very nice. Now, what is he winning? Is he getting an Ultimate Pack or a Standard Pack? Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate everything. Not holding back at all. All the thannies. Oh. One thing to note too is a uh, pretty good like viewing angle. I think currently I'm at stock too. Um, I normally play 85 to 90 field of view. This is what the field of view looks like if you're playing at 85. I dig that. You get a little bit more uh, spatial awareness, in my opinion. Um. Uh, Dr. Th uh, Bushy, please whisper me back with your pilot name. I whispered you. Up oh, there you are. Thank you. And uh, Guile Vautoms, which I now know what that is, what mechs those are. I feel like I'm, I am I learned something from you. Uh, yes, there will be a Master's Challenge tomorrow night. All right, one second, uh, Dr. Bushy, and I'll get you your Thanatos Ultimate Pack. Yeah, once every other one's back in the office. It's a happy, holiday today. Happy Remembrance Day to all you Canadians. Or I should say, you say happy? I don't know, that doesn't seem appropriate, but... <laughs> yeah, so that was, uh, again, uh, John. If you haven't listened to the podcast, uh, we have a SoundCloud link down below. Make sure to listen to that. We sat down with the uh, level designer that uh, did that uh, map and... Um, he's also the one that uh, made the change to HPG, added that uh, third route on both sides. Um, overall, love the verticality. Aesthetically, I think it, it looks cool, um, but gameplay, I think, is where it's going to really shine. Um, and again, just going over the Thanatos, a uh, quick look at the, uh, the items here. Again, just so you guys know, drill, power tool, work lamp, and the metal. So we have that. Um, and of course, all of these are coming out tomorrow. Uh, Dr. Bushy, no worries. You did have the uh, standard pack. I just upgraded you. You have everything now. Congratulations again. And guys, uh, we'll do another Thanatos Ultimate giveaway while we check out the loyalty mechs. So give me a few minutes to set that up. 